Good evening. This is meeting Steve. is being recorded. My name is Steve Lionel, Chair of the National Zoning Board of Adjustment, and this is the June 22nd, 2021 Zoning Board meeting. This evening's meeting of the City of National Zoning Board of Adjustment will be conducted in a hybrid format. The meeting is accessible in person in room 208 at the National City Hall, located at 229 Main Street. And via Zoom at the link posted on all publicly posted meeting agendas. Members of the public and representatives of the applicant have been encouraged to attend the meeting via Zoom, though they may attend in person at City Hall. Real time public comment during the meeting can be addressed to the board using Zoom or at City Hall in room 208. Pursuant to RSA 91A23, Members participating remotely this evening have indicated that their participation is not, quote, reasonably practicable due to temporary space constraints related to city hall construction, combined with the need for provision of adequate space for public member attendance. If any individual has a problem accessing the meeting, please call 603-589-2056 and they will help you connect. In the event that the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that the board will continue to take all votes in the roll call. The Zoning Board and the Planning Department thank you for your understanding and patience. Tonight, we will be hearing requests for deviation from the National Zoning Code in the form of applications for special exceptions and variances. A special exception is a request that seeks permission to do something zoning ordinance permits only under special circumstances. To grant a special exception, five points of law are required to do that. These are outlined in the application and will be summarized in board motions. The variance is a request that seeks permission to do something that ordinance does not permit. Variances also have five points of law to be met, different from those for special exceptions. Per the City of National Bylaws and State of New Hampshire Revised Statutes, a minimum of three or more affirmative votes are required to approve any application. In addition, this board will hear all scheduled cases if a quorum of three voting board members is present at this meeting. Any citizen has the right to contest the decision that this board makes. Should we make a decision that you believe is an error, we have the right to request a rehearing. A written rehearing request must be received by the City and National Planning Department within 30 calendar days from the date of the decision. Should this board not grant a rehearing request, you can file an appeal directly to the New Hampshire Superior Court. Please contact Mr. Falk of the Planning Department for more information. So for this meeting, we have the following full board members in attendance. We have myself, Steve Lionel, I'm the chair. Uh, we have Mr. Jack Currier, who serves as our clerk. Uh, he's appearing uh, via Zoom. We have Mr. J.P. Boucher and Mr. Rob Shaw. Uh, our Vice Chair, Mary Ellen McKay, is not able to uh, attend. I don't see that we have any alternates uh, on tonight. Um, we do have a quorum of four, uh, four board members, so we will be here in all cases. In addition to the board members, we also have with us, although you can't see them on the television, uh, Mr. Carter Falk, who is the Deputy Planning Manager. Uh, Ms. Kate Poyer is on Zoom. Uh, she's the Zoning Coordinator. And Mr. Matt Sullivan is the Planning Department Director. Uh, we'll start the meeting by taking a roll call. When each member states their presence, uh, if you are uh, on, uh, on Zoom, please also state whether there's anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. And uh, the only person uh, on Zoom, member on Zoom, is Jack Courier. So, Mr. Courier. Yep, uh, this is Jack Courier present. I'm the only one in the room. Okay, uh, I'm Steve Lyle. I'm here. Uh, Mr. J.P. Boucher is here. And Mr. Rob Shaw is here. Uh, Mr. Falk, are there changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. The case at 14 Whitman Road, it was a variance for a uh, driveway width, has been withdrawn. Thank you. Okay. I will, uh, are there any questions from the, uh, from the public about how we are going to run this meeting? Okay. Um, if, we, if you are using Zoom uh, on a Lap, on the laptop or most mobile devices, there's a raise hand feature. Um, it may be under reactions, depending on what version of the Zoom client that you have. It would help if you use that 
to uh, if you want to ask a question. But there will be uh, time. Um, I should. Uh, I need to read another paragraph here. <clears throat> The applicant will present the applicant's case followed by questions by the board. We will allow for a rebuttal period as best as possible for persons wishing to speak in favor or with questions or opposition before the board deliberates and determines an outcome. All participants should endeavor to comply with the time frames of 15 minutes maximum for the applicant and five minutes each for anyone wishing to speak in favor or in opposition or with questions. Kate has the timer. Kate, Kate has the light timer. Okay, so uh, Ms. Porter will our timekeeper and she will uh, let us know. Um, I don't have the chat window available so I can't see her little prompts, um, but I'm sure uh, Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Falk will uh, let me know or somebody will speak up to let me know when time is up. Um, so applicants, uh, their representatives and individuals required to appear before the board may appear remotely and are not required to be physically present. They may contact the planning department to arrange an alternative means of real-time participation if they are unable to use Zoom or meet their in person. Documentary exhibits and or visual presentations were submitted in advance of the meeting so that they may be displayed for remote viewing. Real-time public comment can be addressed using Zoom uh, or by telephone or in person. Uh, real-time comments via audio will be addressed at the conclusion of the public hearing. The public is also encouraged to submit their comments for future meetings via email to the planning department, planning at nashuanh.gov, or by mail. Please make sure to include your name, address, and comments. Letters should be addressed to the planning department, PO Box 2019, Nashua, New Hampshire 02061. Okay. Now I will read the first case into the record. The owner is Teen Challenge, New England. Applicant is Lloyd Curtis, address 36 Toll Street, Sheet 42, Lot 105, requesting use variance from Land Use Code Section 190 15, Table 15 1, Item 253, to allow a women's overnight homeless shelter and administrative offices. offices. This is in the RC Zone, Ward 3. Is there somebody here to present the case? Yes, hello. Uh, Attorney Tanya Sponey is here. This is Lloyd Curtis. I'm the executive. Sorry. Please, please keep your name and address for the record. And Lloyd Curtis is on as well. I'm executive director of the Southern New Hampshire Rescue Mission. I, I'm so I, I think maybe two of you were talking at the same time. I, I couldn't understand. Uh, Mr. Curtis, would you, would you start with your name and address? I'm sorry. This is Lloyd Curtis. I'm the executive director of the Southern New Hampshire Rescue Mission. And I have Tanya on, and I apologize for uh, taking over there, Tanya. I'll defer. That's okay. Um, Attorney Tanya Sponey is representing the rescue mission. Um, my firm is Smith, White, Shepherd, and Sponey. We're located at 47 Factory Street in Nashua. And also on the line are two people that I've asked to participate. Um, we have Bob James, who is a known commercial real estate agent in the area. And we also have present, in case there's any question, is uh, the architect for the project, which is, who is Gary Brown. Okay, proceed please. Thank you very much. So um, we are here with permission from the, the registered owner, who's actually Teen Challenge New England. Um, we're here today to request a variance for the property located at 36 Toll Street in Nashua. Um, as already stated by the committee, the, it is an RC zone. My client's goal would be to have a homeless women's shelter at this location. They do already run a successful men's shelter at 40 Chestnut Street, and they are looking to do essentially the same thing, but in the women's capacity. Um, of note for that's I think important today is um, 40 Chestnut Street, which is also in the RC zone. Um, a variance was granted in November of 2008 for this shelter. Um, so it was permitted then. 
the shelf, the women's shelter being proposed is um, a year round shelter. There's going to be, the goal is approximately 25 beds. Um, it would also contain an administrative office for management and it would be staffed at all times, including throughout the evening, night. Um, it, the variance is not contrary to public interest because the shelter clearly serves the population that needs services. Um, and there is no current dedicated women's only shelter in Nashua. Yes, there are um, transient housing opportunities, but not a women's shelter. So this would really serve the public interest. Um, in addition, I have obviously I've reviewed the master plan for the city of Nashua and under um, section four entitled objective, objective assisted housing, it indicates that um, it talks about those in need and it recommends that the city support the development of transitional or assisted housing facilities and programs for those in need to avoid displacement and homelessness. So that's squarely in line with what Southern New Hampshire Rescue Mission is trying to do. Um, I also wanted to point out that there is in the master plan where there's discussion about the French Hill design that within there, there was talk about um, transient individuals and clearly the creation of a homeless shelter would combat, combat the perceived problem that was discussed at that time. The master plan, you know, staying on this topic, the master plan under housing element section six, subsection D, it talks about future housing needs and specifically states that affordable housing, particularly very low income individuals and elderly should be centralized within a location of walking distance with, for services. Um, the proposed location here, the Toll Street is close to downtown and it would provide women with um, services close by such as um, churches, post office, things like that. And also there's another section in the master plan in section E. It says, talks about the community services division. Um, and it says that what's happening is low income families are doubling up in apartments in multifamily dwellings. And it, it discusses the issue that for many families, this appears to be the only alternative to homelessness. So again, the proposed homeless shelter here for women really combats this problem that Nashua is seeing. Um, as I already stated, it's also going to be providing counseling and education to women. Um, and that would, that's going to improve all citizens in Nashua. Um, the prior use to answer any, I'm trying to anticipate questions. The prior use of the property was a business and a professional office for a social service agency. So this proposed use is essentially similar to that. It obviously just expands on the former use of the property. As I may mentioned, I have um, Bob James on the line and I'll make a representation, but he can certainly address individual questions that um, if there is any concern about the surrounding property values, it's, um, his position that it would not diminish the surrounding property values. It was used in the past by Upper Room Compassionate Ministries and Teen Challenge Ministries. And Southern New Hampshire will, just as they do on Chestnut, will operate um, the women's shelter in a professional manner with proper controls to ensure that the surrounding neighbors are not disrupted in any way. Um, Again, Mr. James can address any specific questions. We also do have um, our architect on the line, Gary Brown. If there are any questions regarding the property itself, the goal is to have the overnight shelter portion on the basement level. And the first floor would be the um, office, classroom and counseling um, services area. So I did it. I did ask Mr. 
Mr. Brown to be here in case there were any questions regarding the property itself that I couldn't anticipate. Um, so for these reasons, we're asking that the variance be approved and that the rescue mission can um, fix this property for a woman's shelter. Um, do, do you have, did you have somebody else that wanted to make additional comments at this time? Or are you ready to take questions? I'm ready to take questions. Um, and if they are related to the real estate or the building itself, then I'll directly ask the appropriate individuals to answer. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, any board members with questions for the applicant? Uh, Mr. Courier. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering, I just wanted to clarify, it seems like there won't be any changes to the exterior of the building, but I just wanted to have, uh, get clarity on that. I will ask um, Lloyd to confirm, I I know they just, we just did an inspection and I don't know if there's any um, concerns from the inspection. Lloyd, can you address that? Absolutely. There are no places by the exterior of the property. We'll use the existing exterior, including the parking spaces. Okay, would you give your uh, name and address for the record, please? My name and address, Lloyd Curtis. And we operate the Southern New Hampshire Rescue Mission currently at 40 Chestnut Street. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Mr. Carter? Yes, uh, thank you. And and the other question I have is, uh, being that you've been operating uh, for some time at 40 Chestnut Street, I was just wondering if, uh, you know, because sometimes we hear concerns by abutters of maybe potential like increased activity or noise. Uh, I, and I'm just looking, I guess this question would be to Mr. Curtis is, at 40 Chestnut Street, what would be your thoughts on, you know, the abutters? Would they feel that there's, you know, they they see increased activity or are they kind of happy and, you know, it's just like another house? I was just wondering because my thought would be that what happens at 40 Chestnut Street is probably similar to maybe what you could anticipate here. So so I think, and and maybe I'm right or wrong with that, but I turn it to you and just want to like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'd love to answer that question. Our current abutters to 40 Chestnut Street are all, we consider them almost family. Um, we respect um, their rights. We ensure that our property is well protected and safe. All of our guests are expected to be checked in and inside the property, inside the facility by 8.30 p.m. each evening. Uh, we don't have a lot of activity outside of the uh, building um, beyond those time frames until wake up calls, which are six o'clock in the morning. And we actually serve our community, our neighbors with the services that we provide, not only to the men in the shelter, but we host a gift center every other Tuesday where we offer food and clothing to our community. And we have a ton of our neighbors who actually uh, come and use our services. Um, we offer Thanksgiving and Christmas meals to a variety of our, our, our families in the area as well as gifts at times, um, as we try to build that those reputations and, and those uh, relationships with people, including the children. Um, so we have quite a good reputation around 40 Chestnut Street and we think folks appreciate our services. Okay, thanks. And then just one other question is, uh, in the application about when it says 25 beds, my, my first thought is like 25 beds for that size house is kind of a lot, but I, I again, I'm wondering like, how does it compare to 40 Chestnut Street? Is it equivalent, um, more or less? And do you think that 25 is a lot or a little? Because it's kind of hard for me to gauge other than I just look at a house and hear 25 beds and it. To me, it seems like on the high side. Yep, the facility that we run at 40 Chestnut Street, um, at the peak of winter, uh, we can uh, house up to 35 guests. Um, and so we figure that this property, which is actually just a little bit bigger, um, that that would be an appropriate number for us to start out with 25. Okay, thanks, I'm, I'm all set for now. Thank you. Uh, any other board members with questions? Sean, I have no questions myself. 
Um, okay, at this point, uh, is there anybody uh, on the call who wishes to speak in favor of this application? I am seeing you shaking your head. Okay. Is there anybody on the call with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? I hear so. Um, in that case, I will close, close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, Mr. Curry, your comments? Um, so I, at first I was uh, maybe a, this application gave me a little pause uh, when I just went to look at the structure and saw the, the posting because I did my site walks early. The application uh, gave me comfort in that this organization uh, has been doing this for a while, seemingly with success, and uh, that comfort is supported tonight with the testimony I hear. My feeling is like uh, if this goes forward, and it's it's going to have my support at this point. Um, I to me, it's going to get off the ground like a well-oiled machine. So I'm, I I, I don't think it's doesn't seem like it's going to be problematic for the neighborhood. We we don't hear anybody concerned about that so i'm i'm good to go with it I, I i think it meets the criteria of the use variance thank you mr shaw your comments i'd say that uh pretty much can echo what mr carter said and uh, we have nothing else to add. mr boucher no, i shouldn't have said that specifically you don't have to but you can't <laughs> i'm also in support of the application for, for the reasons spoken to and, and i'm also in support um, I think this is a great application, and uh, and like I agree that it, it fulfills a definite public need. Uh, would somebody care to make a motion, Mr. Bishop? Thank you. I'd like, to, I'd like to make a motion to approve the use variance for Teen Challenge New England, Incorporated Owner Lloyd Curtis, Applicant, 36 Toll Street. Chief 42 Lot 105 requesting use variance from land use code section 190 15 15 1, number 253 to allow women's overnight homeless shelter administrative offices to the RC zone for three. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's purchase of the property given the special conditions of the property and the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the variance. We find that it is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. We find it will not adversely affect the property values surrounding the process. We find it's not contrary to public interest. And we find a substantial justice to be served. So again, I make a motion to approve the use of hands. Senator Shaw seconds. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? I did have a comment on the motion. Um, uh, just one thought. I, I, I'm not sure if we, uh, the board discussed it. It's certainly in the application, but as I type the, the voting record here, and we talk about the special conditions associated with the property, I, I, I'd like to throw out that, you know, this property has served previously as a social services. I know it's in the application. I'm not sure if we actually discussed that, but it, this property did serve previously in a similar capacity and was a business before that. And, and that's, to me, a, a special condition of the property you know in the rc zone that would allow the use variance uh so i just wanted to get that out and see if the other folks on the board might agree with that also it was it was stated it, it was the yes. testimony yes it was testimony. Oh, okay i'm sorry uh i i i'll have that here on the voting record so i think we're all i'm okay with that as is then okay very good uh, mr courier how do you uh uh, Mr. Courier votes in favor of the motion to approve. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. Uh, that's four to nothing. Uh, congratulations. Your variance has been approved. Please be aware that there's a 30 day window of appeal. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact Mr. Paul at the planning department. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Case number two, the owner is Paula Marina, address 10 Jackson Street, sheet 38, lot 75, requesting special exception from land use code section 
Table 15-1, item 3, to allow an accessory dwelling unit in the second floor of an existing home. This is in the GI slash TOD zone, Ward 7. Is there somebody here to present the case? Hello, my name is Jonathan, and next to me is Paula <clears throat> from St. Jackson Street. Good afternoon. Okay. Please proceed. Yeah, we would like, um, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, we would just try to do um, an in-law apartment for, for my parents. Um, um, just as, so it's gonna be like a small one bedroom apartment as you see on the on the, on the the thing with small kitchen and a small um, bathroom. Um, and uh, we'll be living on the first floor and they will be living on the second floor. Um, there, there won't be no exterior. Uh, we're not gonna do anything on the outside. It'll be only on the second floor. Um, so. and are you and are you familiar with the nine special regulations that uh, you need to agree to uh, for an accessory dwelling unit? Yes. Yeah. So, I, I, for, I for example, it uh, shall not exceed 750 square feet. Yeah. Um, shall be the only accessory dwelling unit within this, this that building. Um, the accessory dwelling unit shall not alter the single family character or appearance of the single family dwelling or its conformity with the neighborhood. Yeah. So you're not making, you said you were not making any external changes to the, to the no. house. No, it, it, it's actually uh, uh, below 500 square feet the whole uh, thing. So. Okay. Um, the owner must occupy the primary or accessory dwelling unit, so you're going to be living there. Okay. Yep. Um, yep. And the owner of the property shall provide the city of Nashville with a covenant for filing with the Hillsborough County Registry of Deeds, along with the appropriate filing fees, fees and the text of that should have been provided to you. Have you seen that? Can you repeat that again, Doug? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Item number five is the owner of the property shall provide the city of Nashville with a covenant, which is a, an alteration to um, is to the deed. Uh, yeah. The covenant for filing with the Hillsborough County Registry of Deeds, along with the appropriate filing fees, so you have to pay for that. The covenant yeah. shall be as follows. So you are familiar with this? Thank you, Mr. Falk. Mr. Falk? Mr. Chairman, I know no one can see me. I'm kind of in the corner here, but we will send them a copy of that and then they can fill that out, you know, should the board support this. Okay. Kate, Kate will actually take care of that for them. I, it, basically, what this says is that you agree that, um, that what you are doing is, is creating an accessory dwelling unit as defined by the city of Nashua, um, and that if a special exception was granted and the continued use of it as a, an accessory dwelling unit uh, requires that compliance with all current and subsequently adopted ordinances and statutes applicable to the property. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, one additional off street parking space is required above the minimum standard for a single family house. How many spaces do you currently have? Parking spaces? So, right now I can put um, there's like two, one next to the other one, like pretty comfortable, but there's enough to put one, three cars, like one behind the other one and then one next to it. Okay. Right, right next to the house. Okay, very good. An interior door shall be provided between the primary dwelling and the accessory dwelling unit. What was that, sorry? An inter interior door shall be provided between the primary dwelling and the accessory dwelling unit. Yep. So how, yep. Do you get, how do you get to... You, you get yes, to, to get inside. from... From from inside, okay. Um, yep. The single family dwelling and the accessory dwelling unit shall not be separated in ownership, so you will own both of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, okay, and the ninth one, not, not a problem. Okay, so, uh, is there anybody on the call who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Anybody. Is there anybody on the call who wishes to speak with questions to 
concerns or opposition to the application. And I'm not seeing anybody there. Okay, so I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, Mr. Shaw, do you have any comments? I am in support of this application. It seems quite straightforward. No issues. Uh, they meet all the criteria. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Boucher. I'm also in support. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Mr. Carrier? I'm also in support of the application. Um, I believe it meets all the criteria and is quite straightforward, as Mr. Shaw says. <clears throat> and I also wanted to throw out uh, to Mr. Lionel that at the Zoom meetings, your voice has been very clear here on, on the other end of the Zoom meetings. Uh, tonight, it's a little harder to hear. I'm, I'm not sure if there's a microphone near you, but it's just uh, not uh, exceptionally clear like it has been uh, previously. Just wanted to throw that out there. There is, we do not have individual microphones. There is a central microphone, which I have been assured picks up everybody's voice. Um, <laughs> and I am trying to speak uh, uh, as clearly and, and uh, loudly as I can. Um, but uh, I, I will, we'll have to continue to do that. Um, fortunately, we will have two or at most three or more meetings here. And then we'll go back to uh, our auditorium where uh, we have individual microphones. At least we did. Um, <laughs> maybe we will again. Okay. Um, but I, I, I gather also the applicants seem to not, not fully understand what I was saying, so I may get you to talk even a little louder because I am the farthest person away from the microphone <laughs> in this room. So, um, would somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Shaw, thank you. I'd like to make a motion on behalf of Paula and Marina at 10 Jackson Street, uh, sheet 38, lot 75. The request, is, <clears throat> the request is for a special exception in land use code section 190-15, table 15-1, number three, to allow an accessory in-law dwelling unit in the second floor of an existing home. This is in the GI slash TOD zone. Uh, it is listed in the table of uses, as just noted in the intro. Uh, there will not be any undue traffic congestion or uh, created or unduly impaired uh, pedestrian safety. There will be no overload of public water, drainage, sewer, or other municipal systems. And the special regulations are fulfilled by testimony. Those are the nine criteria specific to accessory dwelling units and has been covered by testimony by the applicant. And uh, lastly, it will not impair the integrity or the character of the neighborhood. It will be detrimental to the health, morals, or welfare of residents. And move to approve this special exception. Thank you. And Mr. Boucher seconds. Thank you. Any discussion of the motion? OK, take a vote. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. I, uh, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. Uh, that's four to nothing. Congratulations, your special exception has been granted. Uh, again, there's a 30 day window of appeal. Um, please contact Mr. Thoth at the planning department if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to case number three. The owner is 300 Main Street Realty, LLC. Applicant is daily sign in address 300 Main Street. Uh, sheet 17, lot 21. Requesting variance from land use code section 190-108C6 to exceed maximum wall sign area 100 square feet permitted, 148.9 square feet existing, and additional 18.76 square feet is proposed for a total of 167.66 square feet. This is for the B3 and M zone, Ward 7. Uh, somebody here to present the case. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm Douglas Boyce. I'm from Bailey Sign Company in Westbrook, Maine, uh, representing Shaw's and its parent company being Albertson's uh, Supermarkets. Uh, Shaw's is joining the ranks of many large retailers in uh, providing a new service uh, 
to allow customers to order groceries online, then uh, come, to the, come to the store location and park in designated parking spaces, wherein the supermarket employees who have selected their orders will then bring them out to their car. This is already in effect at, at other, many, several other retailers you probably are familiar with. Uh, Shaw's is uh, again, uh, one, one banner under the Albertsons uh, supermarket uh, empire that runs uh, across the country. And Albertsons has created uh, signage graphics basically for use uh, in any of their store banners that operate across the country. So that's what we're, uh, what we're working with here. Uh, the one sign being uh, pointed to at, at this time is the, uh, is the, it's called, the program is called Drive Up and Go. So for that, they have a, a, uh, an illuminated wall sign with a, with a vehicle symbol on it, which you see the red and white sign. Uh, that's an illuminated disc, uh, internal illuminated disc and the lettering beneath it, which, say, which says drive up and go, those are non-illuminated uh, metal letters. Uh, this is a rather conservatively sized sign, as was mentioned, 18.76 square feet uh, for this. Uh, it's important that they have you know, advertising for this service. Uh, this is something that uh, has been needed for a while, particularly with COVID, but they're finally getting around to, you know, to implementing it and it will, will surpass, it'll, that service will last for a long time to come. Uh, it's proven to be pretty important in retail to have this. Um, so the current uh, signage exceeds the ordinance, the current wall signage in the building for Shaw's exceeds the current code because the code changed after the store was first built and signed. Apparently the old uh, signage threshold was 150 square feet for this zone back when the signage was put up at 148.9 and the, the zone was changed, zoning was changed and current zoning is only hundred square feet allowed. Uh, in any rate, in any event, the, the additional sign is, is obviously in need of a variance to be installed. Um, so with that, um, the, I'll run through the five, five uh, variance uh, tests. Uh, granting of the variance will allow Shaw's to identify its new drive up and go program as being implemented at this location. The program by which customers order groceries online and pick them up at the store is an important service for customers who have health or mobility issues or for other reasons do not want to enter the store. The service is in the public interest and thereby not contrary to it. Number two, the proposed sign will identify a service that will promote the health, safety, and welfare of customers by allowing those who may have adverse health issues to do their shopping without interacting with the general public inside the store, within the store. The drive up and go service and the wall sign identifying it are harmonious with the commercial retail shopping center environment. Number three, the benefit of the applicant is to allow the promotion of the new drive up and go service that will provide a substantial public benefit to those who use the service. There's no harm or adverse issue caused by the granting of the variance. Number four, the variance would allow an additional appropriately scaled sign on the large storefront of the existing Shaw's supermarket. The store is located in a retail shopping center where the neighboring properties are commercial and or retail. As such, the additional sign will not detract from the, from the value of those properties. And lastly, uh, Shaw's has two existing wall signs that were conforming when originally installed, but due to subsequent change in zoning, now exceed the current 100 square foot maximum allowable sign area. The new proposed sign would result in further nonconformance. Therefore, the variance is needed. Reducing or eliminating existing signage in order to add the new sign and keep the total sign area within 100 square foot cap would result in unnecessary hardship. The building has 300 feet of frontage. So the addition of the new 18.76 square foot sign is reasonable. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Sean, uh, Mr. Kerner, do you have any questions? Okay, I see your hand up. Yeah, I, if uh, Kate could scroll back to the, uh, I, really the first picture that showed the drive up and go sign. Yeah, that one right there. Uh, maybe this isn't so much a sign question as a more of a logistics question, but on, on that picture is, is the idea that the, 
like a car pulls up under that canopy or does it just kind of stop on the asphalt, you know, like as maybe it would now and say a passenger would get out or is the car designed to go up under that canopy? How, how, how is that supposed to work? I was curious. Okay, answer your question is neither of the above. I didn't explain fully and I apologize. Uh, this, this, is, this program is complemented by uh, signs to be placed in the parking lot that identify the specific parking spaces that customers utilizing the service will park at. Those signs will clearly show it's for drive up and go customers customers pull up they have a designated space name letter or number and a phone number that they call into the store to let the store personnel know that they're there waiting for their order which gets brought out to them typically those spaces are in fact in this case they're the, they're the closest spaces to to the front of the store while not uh not utilizing any other spaces currently uh used for handicap parking uh, ada parking spaces so they usually, and it's usually at the doorway that the store associates are going to be uh, entering and exiting as they as they service these needs. So we like to have the the store, the wall sign on the store, be close to the location where those parking spaces are going to be uh, located. So there are existing parking spaces that are going to get these signs, and no new parking spaces are created. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that because that where we see in that picture that Kate has right there, my experience, that's the most congested part of the store because everybody wants to get dropped off. And I thought, geez, if, if that's where the pickup is, that might be problematic. But with your explanation, I, I see what you mean. That, you know, people will be bringing the carts out to the cars. The cars aren't even going to be in that picture as we see. They're going to be parked kind of behind it. So I, I get that. Um, I guess I had one other question, and th this would be for, for Mr. Falk. And is the Dunkin' Donuts sign, is that, that's not part of this calculation? That's considered a, a separate business? Could you just clarify that for me, Mr. Falk? Uh, yes, Mr. Kerr. Um, since Dunkin' Donuts is a separate business, they are allowed wall signage. There's a maximum that they can have, even though they don't necessarily have frontage in the building, but they can have a, a little sign like that, which they did get a permit for, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Shaw's square footage. So okay, thank you. thank you. Is that it, Mr. Perrier? Yes, I'm, I'm all set, thanks. Okay, so no other questions from the board? I have none. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> is there anybody on the call who wishes to speak in favor of this application? I'm not seeing anybody. Is there anybody in the call who wishes to speak with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Okay, not seeing anybody there. Uh, so I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, Mr. Boucher, your comments? Yes, um, I'm going to support the application. Um, I believe that it's it's a, it's a modest um, request for signage, considering the you know the large storefronts. I also point out that uh, Shaw sits uh, pretty far back from Main Street, so I think this would also help identify uh, as you come into the plaza, uh, whether you're coming in um, from a side street or from the, the front entrance, kind of lead you to the right side of the, the right side of the store. Um, as Mr. Curry states, that there are times where it's pretty busy there, so I, I think anything to help direct people to that location again, I think it's a modest sign. Uh, so I sign, and I don't think uh, it, it's going to. Uh, this I don't believe there's any negative effects to uh, the property, so I'll support the application. Mr. Courier, I support the application. Really, Mr. Uh, Boucher's comments cover where where I'm at with it, so I'm I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I concur with my colleagues. I, I pretty much kind of feel like this is much more of a directional sign than most regards as far as the function of the service. So I think that, that definitely is, I think, very important. It will be helpful overall for safety and traffic flow in, the, in that area. So I, I am fully in support. Thank you. And uh, I'm also in support for all of the reasons my colleagues have stated. <coughs> Using. Somebody carry the motion. Mr. Boucher, thank you. 
I'd like to make a motion to approve the area variance for 300 Main Street Realty LLC, Albert, Albertson's Companies Incorporated, doing business at Shaw Supermarket, owner Bailey, uh, owner Bailey Sign Incorporated's applicant, 300 Main Street, Sheet 17, Lot 21, requesting a variance from Language Code Section 190 108, Section C, Subsection 6, to exceed the maximum wall sign area, 100 square feet permitted, 148.9 square feet existing, and additional 18. 0.76 square feet proposed for a total of 167.66 square feet to the D3 MU zone, Ward 7. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property, given the special conditions of the property and the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the variance. Um, the approvals of this motion believe that um, the sign is a, is a modest addition to the, to the, um, to the storefront. Uh, also, the store is a large storefront that sits uh, far back from Main Street, um, and um, this sign, uh, in, in most res in some respects, in most respects, will be, you know, to us, uh, we discuss more of a kind of a directional type sign, um, again, to help people lead them to the correct side of the store for the service. Uh, we find it is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. We find it will not adversely affect property values or surrounding parcels. We find it's not contrary to public interest. We find a substantial justice will be served. So again, I make a motion to approve the area of variance. Mr. Shaw, thank you for your second. Any discussion of the motion? Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. And I, Mr. Langell, vote in favor. Uh, that's four to nothing. Congratulations, your variance has been approved. Again, Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to case number four. Owners are Caitlin Lee and Wei Lee. Applicant Joshua Gao. Address One Lamb Road. Sheet B, Lot 3003. Requesting special exception from land use code section 190-15, table 15-1, item 3, to allow an accessory dwelling unit in the basement of an existing home. This is the R40 zone, Ward 9. Is there somebody here to, uh, to give the application? Hi, uh, yes, I'm Joshua Gao, resident of One Lamb Road, um, Nashville, New Hampshire. My mother, Caitlin Lee, who is the owner of the property, is also here as well. Um, I've been a resident in Nashua for 17 years and I'm a student at Nashua High School South. And very similar to the 10 Jack Street case, I'm applying for an ADU. I've reviewed the um, the nine requisites for um, accessory dwelling units and um, things from the adequate parking to the 750 um, square feet, square footage um, limit have been met. So I um, wanted to open up this time for, for any questions or anything that any of you may have for the property. Thank you. Okay, any questions from the board? I, I, <clears throat> sorry, I can't, can't see everybody. Oh, Mr. Currier has his hand up. I, I thought that might be the case. Uh, okay, Mr. Currier, go ahead. Well, it's actually not a question. It's just uh, a comment. And I, I drive by this house many, many times, and I've never seen it. It's set so far back. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out. <laughs> and it's, it's very far off the road and it looks like nicely camouflaged. I have seen it because I went to their door, doorstep once. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Uh, just to maybe just further clarification, I know you um, noted that um, you, you're familiar with those criteria, and I just wanted to make sure by testimony that you will be able to adhere to all of those nine criteria for the special exemption. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's, all. That's it. Mr. Boucher, any comments? No. Oh, okay, and I had, I had no questions. Is there anybody on the call who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Not seeing anybody. Is there anybody on the call with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Not seeing anybody. Okay. Uh, 
that will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Courier, your comments? I think the application speaks for itself. All the criteria is met, and of course, the applicant is testifying it. He'll adhere to the nine criteria. I, so I think it meets all the criteria. Again, as simple as that. Um, and I'm in full support. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. I likewise agree. Mr. Boucher. I also support the application. And I also support the application. It's very straightforward. Uh, would somebody care to make a motion? Mr. Shaw, thank you. I'd like to make a motion on behalf of uh, owners Caitlin Lee and Wei Lee, applicant Joseph Joshua Gao, by uh, One Lamb Road, uh, for a cheap B lot 3003, requesting special exception for my use code section 190 15, table 15 1, number 3, to allow an accessory in law dwelling unit in the basement of an existing home. This is in the R40 zone. It is listed in the table of uses, as just noted. Uh, there it will not create undue traffic congestion or unduly impair pedestrian safety. It will not overload public water drainage or sewer or other municipal systems. Uh, the special regulations are fulfilled, that is, the nine criteria for accessory dwelling units. And as noted by testimony, uh, the applicant will meet those. And it will not impair the integrity of the character of the neighborhood or be detrimental to health, morals, and welfare of residents. And with that noted, I move to approve the special exception. Mr. Boucher, thank you for your second. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes uh, in favor of the application. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher votes in favor. And I, Mr. Leno, vote in favor. Uh, congratulations. That's four to nothing. Your uh, special exception has been approved. Uh, there's a 30 day window of appeal. Contact Mr. Falk of the Planning Department if you have any questions. Moving on. Thank you. Moving on. Thank you. Moving on to case number five. The owner is Apple Tree Properties, LLC. Applicant is BJ's Wholesale Club, address 210 Vandy Webster Highway, CA 231, requesting the following variances. One, from land use code section 190-108C2 to exceed max, maximum wall sign area, 30.2 square feet permitted, 88.4 square feet proposed. And two, from land use code section 190-108E2 to exceed maximum number of permitted wall signs, three permitted, four proposed, all on gas station canopy. This is in the HB zone, Ward 7. Uh, somebody here to present the case. Carolyn. Okay, uh, please give your name and address for the record. My name is Carolyn Parker. I live at 3 Lorion Avenue in Worcester, Massachusetts. Proceed. Walk us through your application. Thank you. So um, basically, BJ's has um, a warehouse wholesale club located at 8 Sexton Avenue. As with most of the um, BJ's, they like to have a gas station also there so that the people that purchase product from BJ's can get a discount on their gas. So the issue with this site is that this gas station is not going to be located on the actual property. It's going to be further down the road. Um, I think it's maybe a quarter to a half a mile down the road. So in normally we would be allowed square footage based on the whole building where now this is a gas station with what we call a tuck building. It's just a tiny building. It's not a convenience store. It's just got a person in there with a bathroom. And the problem being is that the building size is only 20 foot two inches. So when you're allowed 20 foot two inches times 1.5, you're only allowed approximately 30 square feet. Each of our proposed signage is <clears throat> sorry 22.1 square feet so we have pulled a permit and we have um gotten a permit for one um canopy sign but as we stated we're not close to the bj's we want people to be able to easily see and find this gas station we're on a divided highway 
So we're requesting to have a BJ's canopy sign on all four sides of the canopy. As I mentioned in my letter, if we were a normal gas station, normal convenience store would be 60 to 70 feet wide. We'd be allowed over 105 square feet. Therefore, we wouldn't require a variance. It's just due to the size of the building at this particular gas station. Do you want me to go over the five reasons or? Uh... Might as well. Okay. Um, so it won't be, granting the variance will not be um, contrary to the public interest um, because the BJ's gas station will be new to the community community and the location being far away from the BJ's Wholesale Club itself means we need the additional canopy signs will help potential customers to safely locate the gas station. We are in a highway business zone and the additional signs will not change the neighborhood or threaten the safety or welfare of the public. In fact, it will enhance the safety of the public to clearly see the gas station and enter the property. The proposed use will observe the spirit of the ordinance. If a variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed because the signs allowed per the sign ordinance are not large enough to properly advertise a gas station with an overhead canopy that is 182 feet, four inches by 24 feet. As mentioned, the site is located in a highway business zone and additional square footage would not be out of place in this area. Substantial. Uh, Substantial justice would be done to the property owner by granting the variances. Substantial justice is done because the proposed wall signs are needed since we're located away from the BJ's Wholesale Club. And customers will need to be able to find the gas station safely. No harm will come to the public by allowing the additional signs. It will in fact bring business and employment to the community. Proposed use will not diminish the value of the surrounding properties. The granting will not change the value as we are located in a highway business zone where you would expect to see this type of business and these amount of signs. Special conditions exist such that literal enforcement would result in unnecessary hardship. The unnecessary hardship as mentioned before is that the BJ's Wholesale Club is not on the same property. So we need to have additional signs on the gas station so the customers can safely find it with ease. And the building or kiosk is only 20 foot, sorry, 20 foot too wide, not allowing us enough square footage to properly advertise the new gas station. So we feel that the additional square footage should be allowed. Any questions? I, I, I do have a question. Um, you're requesting canopy signs on all four sides of the canopy. Is there a particular reason that a sign is being placed on the east elevation, which won't be able to be seen by anybody on, on any of the surrounding streets? Well, the sign on the front of the canopy is going to help people that are across the street. This property is across the street. We're a two lane highway. So. Okay. What's that? A four lane high, whatever. We're a divided highway. So the canopy sign on the front is going to help the people across the street see it. The two yeah, on the I'm side. On, on the side that's closest to the river. I apologize. I don't know where the river is. <laughs> so it'd be the back, Down the hill. Back of the. Across, away, the other, away from Daniel Webster Highway, away from across the, the divided in the, highway. In the back of the canopy? Yeah, back um, if there's nothing back there, um, the, that's how the people are entering the gas station. Um, that's how they drive into it. Um, I, I, I don't know. They were just requesting four. If that doesn't seem feasible, then we'll take three or two additional. Comment on that, I'll see that. Yeah, I'll <laughs> to our discussion. Um, it, it was really more of a matter of curiosity because I didn't think there was. Uh, really much visibility there, but what I do see. Well, that's that, where the, that's where they enter the gas station coming up um, Adventure Way and enter the back of the property. I had overlooked that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mr. Shaw, you had some comments. Uh, I was just going to wait till our public. Uh, oh, okay, fine. Any other questions for the office? Just yeah, I do. I think you've already um, kind of spoken to it in one sense as far as the, the because you're doing such a small building. 
the calculations don't work in your favor. I guess the other way I'd just like you to talk about it, and I believe this is the case, but the size of the canopy and the signage that you're putting on it, to me, appears like it's a very normal or reasonable uh, amount of signage for a canopy. In fact, if anything, it looks like it's a relatively small amount of signage for something, a structure that large. So I think, again, your point is that's kind of would be very normal appearance. It's just the calculation because the building size is what works against you in this case. Correct. Yes. And normally, um, uh, if you went to a normal gas station with just four dispensers, um, you know, two and two, your canopy would be maybe 50 feet deep. And then the two signs would make sense. You always just see two signs on a canopy. Um, but because of the length of the canopy and the location of it, we're looking to get the additional square footage. Thank you. Yep. Did you hear the questions? Yeah, just uh, for I'm, I'm not a member of BJ's, but uh, is this a situation? I think you spoke to this that it's it's the gas is only for BJ members, or is it for the general public? That's a good question. I believe it's just for BJ's members, S similar to Stop and Shop, or maybe it's all member. Maybe it's everybody, but BJ's gets the discount. I apologize for not knowing the answer to that, but. Um, if you're a BJ's member, you get a discount on the gas. Similar to a Cumberland Farms, where if you're a Smart Pay member, you get a discount. I can't imagine that they wouldn't let anybody come and get gas there because that would be silly. <laughs> so yeah. I'll find that out for my next one, though. <laughs> okay. I, I think that right nearby, there's a proposed Costco, and, and they were stating that that was for the members only. Uh, and... So I was assuming that this was analogous to that, but but I, I didn't know for sure. Yeah, and I'm, I apologize for not knowing that answer also. I know that they get the discount if they're a member. Um, you know, I don't, I don't. Okay, I thank don't. you. Uh, yeah. Well, Sorry. All right, thanks. I'm all set. Any other questions? Anybody on the call who wishes to speak in favor of the application? Anybody, anybody uh, with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Not seeing anybody. So I will close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, Mr. Shaw. I'm in support of the application. I really do think the crux of this is just the, the small nature of a very small structure. It is, again, would, there would be something more there if it was a you know, regular gas station or normally would be at the site of uh, the whole set of plant itself. So in this case, I think also just scale wise, I see no issue with the signage. And we noted and kind of came to the further uh, understanding about the fourth sign being such that because of where the entrance is, my other thought had been with that uh, proposed uh, Costco and the other development that's planned to go back there off of the rest of the venture way that there would actually be additional traffic coming uh, from the east of the direction that, like, that sign would perhaps be also more beneficial as well in the future, at least proposal for what we were expecting to happen back there. But I am in support of the application. Thank you. Mr. Courier. Um, I, you know, I, I agree, certainly agree with uh, Mr. Shaw's statements about the, we have the small building, a proposed small building and that the uh, the proposed four signs are, you know, modest for the canopy that it's on. But as you had mentioned, uh, Mr. Lionel, I was struggling with the eastern uh, facing sign because I, I I didn't see that really. It's, it's uh, as necessary. Uh, I think the other three are uh but that that's where i'm at on it and i'd like to hear the comments of the balance of the board mr boucher uh i'm also in support of the application um uh, as it stands um i i agree with mr shaw i you know again we, there was nothing going on in the back that could be questionable on that sign back but i believe that you know there's going to be a lot of development back there and i think there's still land right for development back there. And I think that's going to be a major um, thoroughfare, I, 
believe it's busy now just with Best Buy and CVS. I can't imagine what's going to be when that's both back there. So I, I, I think that, you know, if it was if there was nothing happening there, but we have knowledge of something, I have knowledge of something happening, and, and uh, I believe that there'll be more development. So I think that it's okay. And again, um, with the presentation, I think if you look at the scale of the signage on the building, it, it, it almost looks small in a way. Um, it's not small, it's a small, but small like in, the, in the, its uh, aspect of the rest of the building, uh, canopy. So uh, I think um, uh, the way it stands is good, and I'll support the application with the, with the signage as proposed. Um, I, I do support the application. Uh, my question regarding the fourth sign uh, was answered to my satisfaction. I do believe that that fourth sign is necessary. Um, and all of the signs are fairly small uh, compared to the si overall size of the canopy. So, and, and they're simple, so um, I don't have a problem with those. Um, would somebody care to make a motion? Thank you, Mr. Boucher. Let me make a motion to approve the area variance for Apple Tree Properties, LLC owner, BJ's Wholesale Club is the applicant, 210 Daniel Webster Highway, Sheet A, Lot 231, requesting the following variances. One from land use code section 190 108, section C, subsection 2, to exceed maximum wall sign area, 30.2 square feet permitted, 88.4 square feet proposed, and two from land use code section 190 108, section E, subsection 2, to exceed maximum number of permitted wall signs, three permitted for proposed all in the gas station canopy, it's in the HP zone, Ward 7. We find that the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of property given special conditions of property and the benefits sought by the applicant cannot be achieved by some other method reasonably feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the variance. Again, um, this is a very large canopy um, and a very small um, attendant uh, type of building in, in the middle underneath the canopy. Um, and again, um, this, the scale of the canopy um, we feel um, justifies the extra signage and we feel that the signage on the canopy is um, is, is very reasonable for the scale of canopy. Um, we find that it is within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. We find that it will not adversely affect the property values of surrounding parcels. We find that it's not contrary to public interest. We find this substantial justice uh, will be served again. I'll just finish up uh, that the benefit sought by the applicant uh, cannot be achieved by some other method reasonable refusal for the applicant to pursue other than its variants. So with that, I make a motion to approve the area of variance. I'll second it this time. I just wanted to ask a question. Now, yes. Did you speak to the fourth sign, the justification for the fourth sign? I, I did. No, no, oh. in, in the motion. Well, I, I believe that. I know you spoke to the area. I just didn't know if you actually specifically cited by the fourth sign. I'll, 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 make the mo wanted... I'll amend the motion. Okay. Um, absolutely. Um, we find that the fourth sign that's being requested um, um, is warranted. Um, uh, especially with our knowledge of the um, development that's going to happen in the rear of the property. Again, the entrance is at that rear of the canopy, the development, and any potential development um, because there's still a lot of land to be developed back there. Um, so with that, we feel that that full sign is justified, or we feel that we, we'll, we uh, feel that that sign is justified. Thank you. And, and, and a secondary oil approve that amendment. Any discussion of the motion? Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor of the motion. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher. Mr. Boucher votes in favor. And I, Mr. Lionel, vote in favor. Uh, that's four to nothing. Congratulations. The variance has been approved. Thank uh, you. Any Thank you. And I did, Google, I did Google it, and you can be a non member and go there. You just pay more for the gas. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. I'll be seeing you again soon. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. That'll, that'll love the warehouse clubs. Okay. Um, now we'll go to case number seven because case number six was withdrawn. Owner is Reverend Da Silva Carpinelli and Bruno Alex Ritchie. Applicant to Chad Graham, Hillstone News. Fieldstone Land Consultants, address 54 Chandler Street, Sheet 42, Law 221, requesting variance from Land Use Code Section 190-16, Table 16-3, for minimum lot width 50 feet required, 43 feet proposed, 
to subdivide one lot into two lots to construct a new single family home. This is in the RC zone word three. Uh, somebody here to present the case. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chad couldn't be here tonight. And uh, in lieu of him, uh, myself, Chris Gaida, uh, with Fieldstone Land Consultants. And your address, please. Uh, doing business at 206 Elm Street in Milford, New Hampshire. Okay, great. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Um, as you mentioned, um, we're looking for a uh, subdivision of this lot. Um, we do meet the required frontage and square footage. Um, we're just asking for a variance for the lot width, um, which instead of the 50 feet is the 43 feet um, due to the existing uh, building that's already on there. Um, if that building were to be uh, demolished or raised, um, the lot would meet all the requirements, um, but uh, having to raise that building would create an un unnecessary hardship on the on the owners, uh, which is why we're requesting the variance from that uh, lot width. So uh, I I'll apologize, I have a <clears throat> little bit of an unstable uh, connection here. So if I drop out periodically, I apologize, I'll hopefully get right back in. Um, I can go through the uh, the five criteria here. Um, uh, granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest because the existing parcels surrounding the site uh, contain single family homes as well, which are similar <clears throat> and compatible in size to our proposal. And for this reason, we believe this proposal will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or threaten the health, safety, or general welfare of the public. And therefore granting this variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Um, and number two, if the variance were granted, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed, <clears throat> excuse me, because the granting well, this variance would allow, allow for productive use of the existing larger lot uh, as compared to some of the surrounding parcels along Chandler Street, Morgan Street, and Lucier Street. Um, the zoning district for the property is RC, which has a lot size requirement of 5,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage for single family homes. The existing area of the parcel is uh, 11,133 square feet with 100.35 feet of frontage. Um, we believe this property does possess the conditions that distinguish it from other properties in the area in which the location of the existing house allows for the new proposed lot to conform to the dimensional requirements of lot size, building setbacks, and frontage. The project will also increase the city tax base, allow for a reasonable use of the property, and will have no measurable negative impacts to the public. This proposal <clears throat> will not alter the essential character of the neighborhood or threaten the health, safety, or general welfare of the public. And for these reasons, we believe that the granting of the variance would observe the spirit of the ordinance. And number three, <clears throat> granting the variance would do substantial justice <clears throat> because granting this variance would allow for the landowner reasonable use of the property, especially since no lot area, lot frontage, or lot setback variances are being requested for the proposed new lot. Only a modest variance for lot width on the proposed lot. And the existing proposed new lot will be consistent with the other parcels in the area. Yeah. And this variance would do substantial justice because it would allow for the productive use of the property while providing for responsible growth in the community. And we believe the denial of this variance request would be an injustice to the applicant as there would be no apparent gain to the public, to the general public. Number four, granting the variance would not diminish the value of the surrounding properties because this proposal consists of a proposed single family residential lot and the use is consistent with the zoning and will have no negative impact on the surrounding properties. In fact, some of the adjacent properties along Chandler Street, Morgan Street, and Lucier Street do not currently meet this lot with dimensional requirements. And therefore, we do not believe that this proposal would have any negative impact on the surrounding properties. And our experience has been that a new home construction similar to what is proposed will typically have positive impact on surrounding properties. And number five, the unnecessary hardship. 
the zoning plan uh, exhibit plan attached identifies the unique features of the property with the existing structures and lot improvements are located along the southern property line. The lot size of 11,133 square feet is larger than a number of the nearby lots and exceeds the 5,000 square feet required to subdivide. The two newly created lots will have a have or exceed 5,000 square feet of area and will meet frontage requirements. And the location of the existing house causes the need for this variance request because otherwise if the house were demolished, then this property would support a subdivision with no variance needed. Therefore, the existing placement of the house creates a hardship and all infrastructure is in place inadequate. And this proposal is consistent with the surroundings and will therefore not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. And for these reasons, we believe that the subdivision of this property meets the spirit and intent of the ordinance and little literal interpretation and does not impose any unnecessary hardship. Happy to answer any questions if the board has any questions from the board. Mr. Carter. Um, the, uh, if the lot were cut in half evenly, would it be 50, 50, a feet each? Is it currently, you know, 43, uh, you know, 57, is that what would? Well, right. It, it meets the, the frontage as, as proposed right now meets the frontage, but, um, the lot width at the setback line that, that, um, you know, stretches, you know, down to 50 feet. Um, it does have to get slightly narrower to, to allow for the existing building um, to meet those side setback lines. Okay. And, and I, I didn't, I, on the other side of Chandler Street, there's like a series of lots that to me look equivalent to pretty much equivalent to this lot. Are they, are those lots all 50 feet as well? Or are they less than that? Do you know? Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm uh, just, just eyeballing it on the plan. It, it appears to me that they would be less than that. Okay. Uh, thank and you. We have, we have an annotated, uh, uh, diagram with, with frontage, uh, frontage is listed and I'm seeing across Chandler Street, I see 45 feet, 44 feet, uh, yeah, 45, 45, 45. Yeah, all of them, all of them are less than 40 So it's not unusual for the neighborhood. Oh, th thank you. That's what I, that's what I thought. But thank you for clarifying that for me. If I could just jump in to maybe help answer Mr. Carrier's question. If you look on the, 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 the site plan, the exhibit plan. Uh, it does show, you know, the existing lot is 100.35 feet in width. So you could divide it and get it to, you know, just 50 in a fraction. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't catch on that one, but now I do. So thank you. Any other questions from the board? Not seeing anybody. Okay. Uh, is there anybody on the call who wishes to speak in favor of this application? Anybody who wishes to speak with questions, concerns, or opposition to the application? Not seeing any. Okay. This is not a contentious meeting. I like that. <laughs> uh, means I get to go home. Uh, close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Uh, Mr. Boucher, your comments. Again, um, you know, the, the, the home, it's a large lot in the neighborhood, obviously. Um, and the house that's existing, um, the existing house that's been there for a while, um, again, is not, again, you know, it's, it's just situated in a way where um, it it's, um, causes issues with splitting the line half. And, and, and obviously, um, the property line would practically be down the side of the house or, or maybe into what maybe before a foot or so. So again, even though this is, um, we're, we're getting here from an irregular shape at, at the setback line, um, I, I believe that the total 
um, the totality of the project, which is the size of the lot compared to the size of lots in the neighborhood, um, what's trying to be achieved, uh, putting in a new home. Um, I, I think that that overwhelms, um, you know, the fact that um, the lot of the setback line is only 43 feet. Um, so again, I feel support, I would support the application um, for its stance. So again, for those reasons of, of the regular shape of the lot. And again, I, I think that, um, you know, the other home is not a home that's in such disrepair that would be something that would be automatically knocked out. I, I think that it's something that, that should stay there. Um, it's been in the neighborhood for a while. Um, so again, I'll support the application for, I'll support the application as this. Thank you. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, I'm in support. I think, you know, especially this is one of those cases where all the other dimensional criteria can be met and are being met in this proposal, and that it's not a matter of trying to squeeze two homes out of a subsized lot or go to some extreme other measures. So I think the fact that there is simply the existing home is the only thing that kind of causes this issue. So I, I feel like this is a very reasonable request in, in usage. So and it's thank you. Mr. Curry. Uh, my comments have been ca captured by most mo already by Mr. Boucher and uh, Mr. Shaw, I don't really have anything else to add, and I'm in support of it, the application. Thank you. And, and uh, again, I will note that the, um, the presence of the existing lot causes the lot shape to be unusual and, and narrows, uh, causing the width problem. But uh, other properties in the area have frontages that, uh, that don't meet the, the ordinance. And I think this is perfectly reasonable, so I support the application. Uh, would somebody care to make a motion? I will. Okay, Mr. Shaw, thank you. I'd like to make a motion on behalf of the owners, uh, Robert D. Silva Parcanelli and Bruno Valentucci. Uh, applicant Chad Brandon Fieldstone Land Consultants. The address is 54 Chandler Street. Uh, this is a sheet 42, lot 221. The request is again for a variance from land use code section 190-16, table 16-3 for a minimum lot width, 50 feet required, 43 feet proposed to subdivide one lot into two lots to construct a new single family home, and this is in the RC zone. Now the variance is needed to enable the applicant's proposed use of the property given the special conditions of the property. Primarily it is that this is, you know, this, there is an existing home on this lot, and the way the home is situated uh, without uh, either going to some sort of setback uh, variance requirements or having to make uh, physical structural uh, changes to that home, it's not possible to meet the width uh, requirement uh, to get the second home in. Meanwhile, all other dimensional criteria required for uh, subdividing the number two lots can be met. Uh, so this is the only uh, dimensional requirement that is not able to be met. Uh, so it's a very kind of unique in that sense. So the lot's uh, sufficient to, to uh, meet uh, two lots of uh, you know, greater than 5,000 square feet, which are required. So there is really no other reasonable means uh, out for the applicant to pursue other than this variance. It is uh, therefore within the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Uh, there's no uh, indications of any negative effects on surrounding parcel property values. The applicant believes, if anything, from their experience, that this will help uh, to raise property values with the new construction being proposed for the, the neighborhood. It's uh, not contrary to public interest, and substantial justice will be served. Therefore, I move to approve this area of areas. Uh, Mr. Boucher, thank you for your second. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor of the application. Boucher, how do you vote? Mr. Boucher votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Now, I uh, will now vote in favor of this board motion. Congratulations. Your uh, variance has been approved. Uh, again, there's a 30 day window of appeal. Contact Mr. Falk at the planning party if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have no hearing requests tonight. We do have an agenda. 
that was sent this afternoon. Does, has everybody had a chance to review it? Yes. Um, any uh, regional impact? I don't. I didn't see any. Uh, Mr. Boucher, do you see any regional impact? I don't. Mr. Shaw, do you see any regional impact? I do not. Mr. Currier, do you see any regional impact? I do not, and I could you repeat who seconded the uh, last case there on uh, Chandler Street, please? Boucher. Got it, Boucher. Thank you. Okay, I, I did have an interesting question. Um, there's the view of motion for a rehearing. I mean, we already did a rehearing request. What does this mean? Well, <laughs> let me take that. Do you want to take that? Sure. Uh, so we have received an additional a challenge to the rehearing that was granted by the board at the prior meeting for the Deerwood Drive variance. Uh, we are attempting to work with Corporation Council at this time to resolve what the correct process is to handle this further uh, request for motion for rehearing. We as staff believe that the appropriate method is in fact for an additional motion for rehearing to be heard by the board against the board's decision to grant rehearing. This is likely sounding confusing, therefore we'll provide a technical memo to go along with whatever the board receives, but essentially the original party or applicant is challenging whether or not the board was correct in granting the rehearing. And the only appeal that the board can hear from its own decision is of course a motion for rehearing. That's why we believe that's the correct process to follow. However, we are currently discussing that with Corporation Council and certainly with both the original applicant and the appellant in the case as well. So we'll have further guidance for you in advance of that meeting, uh, but we are uh, attempting to learn a little bit about the process ourselves right now. Okay, well, this could be a little confusing. confusing. But since, so, so essentially the, the rehearing request is being made of our own decision to grant a rehearing request. That is correct. And it's being made on the basis of a, a essentially a, what they believe to be a technical misinterpretation of the board based on staff's recommendation. So we owe you further guidance on that and we will provide an advance to the meeting. But to, to the chair's point, uh, there are concerns about uh, ripeness and how long that lasts, but uh, we do believe we'll have some guidance on that as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, a, but an excellent question. And Mr. Clock and Ms. Porter and I are learning as we go along in this particular item. Just when you think there's not a new thing, we get a new That's thing. exactly yeah. right. This, this, <laughs> this is all new ground. <laughs> right. it's, it's always something. Yes, yes. You know? yes. Okay. Um, we have minutes from the June 8th meeting. Has uh, everybody had a chance to review the minutes and any uh, edits or suggestions or comments on the minutes? Mr. Courier. Um, there was a suggestion I provided to Mr. Falk earlier today, and that was on the Conant Road case. Um, what was on the minutes that was in our package was uh, it, it, it said that I had asked the question, what is the proposed garage width? What I had asked was what was the rationale for the garage width? width and Mr. Falk had corrected that. So it says, you know, it has me asking what is the rationale for the garage width? And I just wanted to kind of clarify that because the 14 foot width was, you know, clearly stated in the package. Uh, I was just asking why that was, and of course they had given a rationale and then we went forward with it, but I just wanted to have that slight change captured uh, to, I think, accurately reflect my question. So with Mr. Falk's corrected ones, I'm fine with it. So Mr. Falk has, has that correction? Yes. I, I already changed the minutes. I just emailed a copy to Mr. Courier, and I believe he's okay with it. It's really just, I just really only added, uh, I just amended one sentence really. So I didn't bring it here tonight. Um, I can make a copy of it for the next meeting if you want or email to you, but it, was, it was, should be taken care of. Well, the, the, on the other committees I'm a member of, what we do is we say we're, we're going to vote on it as amended. As amended, yeah. And, and it is up to the, the drafter of the document to uh, ensure that you know, the edits made during the meeting are properly reported and published. So, and then, with Mr. Courier's permission, I think it has been amended correctly. Yes, uh, it has. Uh, I could read it um, if uh, if you bear with me a moment. Um, I'll just read uh, 
let me just I'm just pulling it up here. It's it says uh it now says Mr. Courier asked what the rationale was for the 14 foot wide garage and asked to confirm the width of the mudroom. And that uh, accurately reflects my question, which was the rationale for the 14 foot wide. Okay, very good. So um, I'll, I will make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Mr. Shaw, thank you for your second. Um, Mr. Courier, how do you vote? Mr. Courier votes in favor. Mr. Shaw, how do you vote? Mr. Shaw votes in favor. Mr. Boucher, how do you vote? in favor. And I, Mr. Lano, vote in favor. Okay, so the minutes of June 8th as amended are approved. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Shaw, a second. Mr. Boucher makes a second. We are adjourned at 8 o'clock. <laughs>